black and white photography gives us a new way to see the world. But precisely because it's new, it's different, we are used to seeing colors, sometimes it might be hard to see, to find, to recognize black and white images in the field. In this video I'm going to be sharing some tips, things I look for and actions I take to create better monochrome images. Black and white used to be the only option photographers had. Today is a creative choice. It's a choice that I take every single day when I'm making images because I love the creative freedom that black and white gives me. Even though that choice can be delayed until after we take the shot, I believe that the proper way to make black and white images is to think in black and white, to think in monochrome from the very beginning. Today it's easier than ever to pre-visualize a black and white image. I have a video where I explain how I have my camera set up in such a way that I get the black and white preview on the screen. If you should film, you can still use technology in your favor. It's as simple as using your smartphone to preview what you are photographing without the colors. Even though these are very useful tools and I encourage you to use them and take advantage of them as much as you can, the preview will never be 100% accurate. I always tweak my images in post to make them better show what I saw. So we still need to envision that final image. We need to see that final image when we are taking the photo in the field. So these are some tips, things I look for when I'm out taking photos and actions I take to make better black and white images. Light. Always follow the light, never fight it. Light is key in all photography, but even more in black and white. You have to recognize when an image doesn't work in the current light conditions and you have to look for the images that do work in whatever light you might have. Take a look at this shed. We have the sun right in front of us. So if we make an image from here, that image is going to reveal, is going to show all the details of this side of the structure. The story is very different from the other side. Now the sun is in front of us, so if we try to make an image from here, the structure is going to be much darker than it was from the other side. So even though we have features like a door on this side, if we try to show those details, we'd be fighting the light. The light is just wrong for that kind of image. We'd be better off by waiting until later today in the afternoon or in the evening when the sun is in a different position, in the right position, to show those things. What we can do right now, though, is to embrace the light as it is and to make an image with a dark structure contrasting the sun and the trees that we have in the background. Never fight the light because you are always going to lose. Go with it instead. Low light, either at night or my personal favorite, early in the morning. Shooting in these conditions usually means using high ISO values, which can add a lot of noise. That noise can ruin your color photograph, but it can work just fine for a black and white image. Not just work, but it could make for a very greedy and moody one, that kind of images that doesn't leave anyone indifferent. There's also a great loss of detail in the dark areas, which makes everything else in the frame more visible and clear while still giving some context. Night photography still requires some light. Any artificial light will do. In nature, the moon can be a good source of light. Keep in mind that the camera doesn't see the way that we see with our eyes. This is a mistake that many beginners make because they think that a great subject will always make for a great image, and that is not the case. You see, we have two eyes, that is two lenses, that can see at multiple apertures at the same time time they can perceive depth much better and on top of that we have a very powerful device interpreting all that data in real time. The result is that all of these can be very tricky for a photographer because an object, a subject, can be very clear to our eyes but it might be not clear enough once it's on an image. That is a stunning and beautiful tree and I wish you could be here to see it with your own eyes. But my camera is the only way to show it to you. The way I see this in person is very different because my eyes and my brain work together to isolate that tree from everything else to make it much simpler so I can focus on that tree and nothing else. At first I didn't even notice the bushes on the bottom of the tree, I didn't notice how close it was to the other trees and I didn't see the busy background. 
All of those things make this image much more challenging than it looked at first. This tree, even though it's not as beautiful as the other one, not even close, I think it makes for a much better image because everything is much better here. The light, the location of the tree, the foreground, the background, everything. You have to see beyond what your eyes and brain are telling you. Fine contrast, also called figure to ground. Subjects that stand out in the frame always make for much better images. In color photography, we can use colors to separate the subject from the background, but in black and white imagery, we are limited to just the contrast between the whites and the blacks. Those trees back there are an example of a subject that is interesting and it looks good, but it lacks the contrast because of the fog. They are way too far into the fog, so the image couldn't be as interesting. The opposite happens to this stick right here, which is a boring subject and it would have never worked if it wasn't because of the fog. But because we have this fog, now we can create that contrast. And even boring subjects like this one are gonna work better than more interesting subjects like the trees that are in the back. Background. Now, I'm still going to use the trees for this image because I think they make the image even more interesting if we add both things. But you get my point. Even more important than finding a good and interesting stunning subject is to find one that has the contrast that makes it stand out. Mystery. Removing color creates ambiguity in the image. There's still some implied color as our brain is desperately trying to fill in the gaps and trying to assign colors to the things that the eyes are seeing. We can use that to play with the viewer and their imagination. Images that make you stop and think about what you are looking at are some of my favorites. This can be done in color, of course, but the absence of that information can make this much more effective as the brain tries to figure the image out. Is the bison walking on sand or snow? Are these dunes or snowy hills? Is this an infrared photo or just frost? How big is this pyramid? These are questions with no answers, as it is up to the viewer to decide what the image is about. They need to use their imagination to fill those gaps. Deep blacks and bright whites. I like a good contrast in almost all my images. I always try to include something very black to the point of almost pure black and something very bright to the point of almost pure white. Cloudy days are great for this, as I can include the bright white sky on the top and the black dark ground on the bottom of the frame. The subject will be somewhere in the middle, a sandwich of grays between the bright whites and the dark blacks. The final image I envision here is one with a very bright top of the frame because of the sky, of course, and a very dark bottom of the frame because of the foreground, and in the middle just a bunch of shades of grey. Now, there is no clear and strong subject here, but I think it's going to work because that contrast is going to guide the viewer to the center of the frame and there they might realize about the power lines that disappear in the fog. It's a little bit more of a mysterious image, but I think that contrast it makes it work. Ed edit editability 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 anyway black and white lets us to be much more extreme in our treatment of the image in post we can crush the blacks we can blow out the highlights we can use grain to add texture we can greatly overexpose or underexpose the negative and still have a compelling image very few of these will work in color photography I shoot in RAW, so that means that I still have all the color information available to me when I'm editing my images, and I find that to be extremely useful. Abstraction. Make your images more abstract, more surreal, more subtle and gentle. We can add blur or even have nothing in focus in the frame. This can work very well in black and white, as the uh, lack of color only emphasizes that abstraction, making it more powerful. This is similar to creating mystery, but here we don't recognize any objects. We might have no idea what we are looking at. The result is, once again, up to the viewer. There is no right or wrong when it comes to guessing what was capturing the frame. It is totally up to whoever is looking. In the end, there is nothing like experience. Take plenty of shots, edit them, play with them, find the limits of what you can do. So next time, you'll better know what to expect from a scene. Because the more we shoot in black and white, the better we get at it, and the better we become at seeing in black and white.
I hope this video was useful and helpful or at least entertaining. If you found it to be at least one of those things, please consider liking it and subscribing to this channel because it really helps a lot. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.